Well, this video was supposed to be a test of the battery backup that I have running for my furnace. Instead, it's gonna turn out to be a why the APC battery backup had to come out and why I put something else in its place. So this is what I had for a current setup. Here's a picture of my furnace. It's a high efficiency uh, natural gas. And I had an old APC battery backup connected to a battery bank of two lead acid batteries. And this was my power source for uh, the APC. I then wired it in that the power that normally went to the furnace went to the APC. And then uh, the plug in the bottom that you can see there in the picture on the video goes back up and to the safety plug on the outside. So initially when I did try this APC setup, it did work. So I'm not sure exactly what has changed or why it uh, has chosen to fail, but I'm glad it's failed now when I was testing it or playing around with it rather than waiting for when I absolutely need it. So here's how this whole thing played out. I had set up my voltmeter inside the uh, furnace room and I connected it to my battery supply for my APC and Ran on over, get the time on the clock. Then head back over and I was just gonna yank the power out of the wall and watch it go. The burner goes for a little while and it'll just randomly quit. It'll only briefly run off the APC. Now this kind of stumped me here. One that I ended up doing to figure out what was going on here is I went to the bottom window of my furnace and it has a little uh, status LED screen and I checked that out and it gave me an error code 26. Well, one little Google search later for the furnace that I have tells me that is a line and neutral reversed. Now I figured this was no big deal. What I was going to end up just doing is taking my uh, polarity, correcting it and off we go. At least that's what I thought. I flipped the polarity around, powered everything back up, pulled the cord again, and lo and behold, still the same problem. Time to break out the old multimeter and see what's going on with this thing. So as soon as I pulled the multimeter out and I started checking the voltage between the pins, this is when the problem became apparent. If I go across the neutral and the line, Sorry, if I go across the line and the common, if I go across the line and the common, I get 117 volts. But if I go to from the line to the ground, I'm getting 75. And then when I switch from the common to the ground, I only get 51 volts. Now at the time when I was researching this, I had no idea what the heck was going on. This just seemed to me like it was broken. Upon further inquiry, I realized that uh, a lot of the inverters or the cheaper inverters out there, this is what they do is they split half the current on both sides of the waveform and it's not a pure sine wave like your power curve or your power company would supply you. Instead, it's a simulated sine wave. So there's jolts up, jolts down, and then they've some of the better ones, they'll do like a jog sine wave still not the greatest thing. I just wanted whatever I can mimic the power supply that's coming from my uh, hydro supplier and what this appliance thinks it should be getting so that it knows no difference and it also doesn't put any additional wear on my on my furnace. I don't want this thing to break. It's, it's a brand new uh, investment. So back to the drawing board. Let's do this again this time. Let's do it right. So I grab my uh, little plug that's wired up and all this thing does is uh, it just lets me put a clamp on and just test any load to see what the amp draw is going to be. So if you have a clamp on amp meter, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Clamp it onto the line wire, plug the thing in, hook up whatever load that you want and you can test the load. So mine ended up being uh, the highest draw that I've seen was uh, around 500 watts. This of course is showing amps 
to figure out what your watts is, just take your watts correction. Just take your amps, multiply it by your voltage, and that'll give you how many watts. Now this is important for sizing an inverter. I wanted something that was uh, kind of future proof and also let me use a plug or additional power off this thing if, if I wanted to in the future. So the inverter I ended up going with was a 1000 watt inverter which will handle a spike load of up to 2000 watts briefly. Still going to use the same batteries for the time being, but I'm not sure if uh, eventually at some point in time I'm going to want uh, lithium ion batteries or some new battery technology. So. The inverter that I bought will not have a built-in charger. Instead, I will use a standby, just like a little two amp trickle uh, charger. That's what's gonna be charging these batteries back to full after they get used. To start out, pulled everything off, got all the old uh, stuff out of the way, put the wood cover back on and uh, sized the inverter on it just to kind of see how it'll all look out, how it'll all look and how it'll all fit. So with the inverter on, I decided to make two holes down at the center of the battery posts. And this is just so I can have top access to everything. With just the battery connected, before I went all out and hooked this thing all up and found it doesn't work or it gives me some error or the power is not as advertised, I just connected the uh, 12 volts power supply to this thing and uh, we'll power it up here. Battery voltage looks good and it hums and purrs here a little bit so I kind of uh, figure it's working but one way to find out for sure. I should mention you guys will see it in the video here as well on the top. I did add a fuse to the 12 volt and that's just in case something on the internal side would or to arc over that I'm not gonna have a shorting of a battery. So we'll take my handy dandy voltmeter, chuck it on the top and we'll test the pins. And these test exactly the way they should test. From line to either the common or the ground gives me 120 volts and from the ground to the common, no voltage there. Perfect. So far so good, looks like it's gonna work. I connected the AC wire on the right hand side there, that's the AC in. So this was the old furnace power wire. That's what I put in there. And then the AC out is gonna go back up to the switch, uh, the emergency switch on the wall on the outside. And this essentially lets me control the furnace even if it's on battery backup or regardless how it's powered, one switch will turn it off. 12 volt down both sides and as I mentioned earlier, there's a fuse in there to the 12 volt positive of the battery as it's just another safety precaution. What I did with this bottom plug here, this uh, is actually a live and battery power plug as well. Reason being, in a case of emergency, if I uh, do want to charge a cell phone or uh, heat up my aquarium, it's going to be nice to just be able to run an extension cord over there in a pinch. So I'm going to power this thing back up. And the furnace goes on immediately. It took me a couple hours to get this all hooked up the way I wanted to. And it's cold, it's uh, 30 degrees Celsius below outside. So it didn't take long for the house to cool off a few degrees. And the good thing about this is it's actually ramping right up to stage two. You can actually see the watts there. 570 I think is the highest I've seen. And that's stage two heating. So that's the worst this thing will ever see and it had no problem powering it. What's nice about this box, the uh, this inverter, is even after the power goes on, it doesn't just flip it right away. It actually waits a little bit to kind of see if that power is it kind of waits a little bit to see if that power is stable before it switches everything back over. So I really like that. It's near silent. 
and it's got all the connections and closures on the back so the back of this thing looks fantastic now closed up this as far as i know is uh will meet all the codes in my area again check with your area if you're going to do something similar but uh, i feel like this is a much better setup and i'm much happier that it's providing uh, a clean or a pure sine wave to uh, my furnace there's two models of this thing in case you are looking at getting one if you do want the charger built in that's the xc uh, other than that uh, the same one here this is just a uh, x1000 and as previously mentioned i'm not sure which batteries are going to go with and you know what this thing probably does it too or the xc probably does it uh, swaps over to lithium batteries but yada 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 i didn't already had a charger i wanted to use uh, so instead of spending an extra 200 bucks and having something that's potentially outdated in two years with new battery technology i know this is going to work now and that's why i went with this i did test it right away around the furnace for about 15 minutes on it had no issues no errors on the furnace so the 15 minute test of stage 2 heating no problems at all hopefully somebody found this beneficial my apologies for the first video that uh, maybe led somebody down the uh, wrong path so hopefully this will continue to work it's working now only time will tell we will do a test of this thing at some point in time to see how long this thing runs and I'll post back here when I find out what that answer is. For those of you that are curious how we got down this rabbit hole of setting this thing up, I was away at work for about a week and a half and Murphy's Law, the second I leave the house, shit breaks. <laughs> it was bitterly cold outside and my wife and my kid were left back at home in the house and we didn't have any auxiliary heating method behind. Now the natural gas in the area has never gone down ever as far as I've been here. And I've been here 30 something years. So I feel that if I can just supply power to my furnace that I can run, I'm leaving my family in a better, uh, I'm leaving my family in a better place and I'm giving myself some peace of mind when I'm down on the road. If you like it, thumbs it up, subscribe, we'll see you again next time.